we've been connecting our environment to the internet since the internet's been around. But I think the reason why it's becoming so exciting now is that effectively, you know, smartphones have basically commoditized this wonderful stack of technology from processing to memory to communications that now is so cheap we can take a little mini smartphone stack and embed it in all sorts of things, in our houses, in our cars, on our bodies. And so now we can literally make computing environments that live in our homes. Um, we can turn our office building into a compute environment. And that means there are, you know, uh, there's a UI for how you interact with your office building. There are APIs for how other technologies can get information from the office building. Um, in order to sort of have the Internet of Things, uh, you know, I think be as interesting as it is, it not only needs this smart sort of, uh, you know, st uh, stack of technology on the sort of the processing and networking side, but you also need um, a lot of sensor technology. So I've been fortunate to have worked with a couple of, I think, some of the more exciting early successes in the Internet of Things. Um, you know, one of the more, um, you know, well-known ones is Nest. And so Nest, um, you know, was the, a really incredible team who built the Apple iPhone. And so these guys really knew how to not only make a really intelligent, smart, connected device, but also how to make something that really appeals to consumers. And, you know, the smart thing they did is they, they said that, you know, the thermostat shouldn't just be a dumb switch on your wall. It's going to be a sensing, intelligent, you know, connected um, you know, smartphone that manages your temperature and all sorts of things in your house. And they put some sensors in this product that allowed them to determine, you know, are you home or not? And can we take action based on, on the occupancy of your home? And if you're not home, you know, this is a relatively simple idea, but if you're not home, we're going to turn, uh, you know, up or down the temperature. So if it's the winter, we're going to go ahead and let the house cool down. And then when you come home, we'll naturally, we'll detect your home and we're going to heat it up for you. And so it's just some of this, again, smart detection and understanding of occupancy and then some really basic learning technologies that allows them to sort of predict and react and understand consumer preferences that then makes the device really work for the customer. So it's not, it's not adding complexity, it's actually simplifying your life. The way I think about it is I, I feel like it's sort of the next frontier of innovation. And you know, if you look back historically at waves of innovation in Silicon Valley, you know, they're very pretty clearly defined by there's a there's a big hardware innovation, whether it's you know hard disk drives or you know PCs, you know, internet networking equipment. And then that enables a really long period of software innovation on top of that big leap forward in hardware platforms. And so for me, the Internet of Things is really kind of that next new platform area post, you know, the iPhone, uh, you know, the smartphone and the tablet ecosystem. And so right now what we're seeing is a bit of the Wild West. People are trying to figure out, so, you know, what are, what's, a, what's the standard look like? What are the communication standards? And, you know, to complicate things, there isn't sort of one specific instantiation of this platform. There's lots of different things. So Internet of Things is going to look really different in a residential situation versus, um, you know, an industrial situation. And so, um, you know, I see this as the super, super early days. And, you know, this, this is a, a period that's going to last for quite some time. Another way to think about this is, you know, in, in the really beginnings of new areas of innovation, you tend to see very vertically integrated companies. Companies that, you know, if I'm going to make a smart thermostat, I have to do everything um, because they're, you know, this is a new part of the industry. And so everything from the firmware to, you know, all the hardware to the software. And, and so these are really big undertakings. And, um, and then, you know, over time, as more companies find success, there will be pieces of that tech architecture that get picked off and turned into services. And, you know, and then we'll start to see sort of some of those horizontal technologies. Uh, you know, for example, one that I think makes a ton of sense to sort of horizontalize sooner rather than later is just that, you know, this notion of I want to connect something to the internet, like a Wi-Fi, on-demand Wi-Fi connection or an on-demand you know, so almost a, it's like a whisper net as a service kind of thing. And so I suspect we'll start to see some companies that go after these 
technology layers, but it's hard to lead with that, and, you know, when it's still the Wild West and people don't really understand, you know, what are the killer apps and how are consumers going to be you know, interacting with these things. What really gets me excited as an investor in the Internet of Things is I think there, it enables some really interesting new business models. So, um, you know, one company that I'm on the board of is called Enlighted, and it's easiest described as sort of nest for commercial buildings. And um, they put a sensor at every light in the building, and these sensors allow them to uh, control um, energy use on lighting based on occupancy, but then they can also do things like controlling HVAC, they can understand the, the, you know, the occupancy of the buildings themselves, uh, and then they can do a lot of other things around security and space planning. And so when you take a step back, what's exciting about what the technology enables is that by putting in this hardware sensing platform, you're getting some proprietary new data that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. And then once you have this data, you can then build a series of software applications that provide different insights to the business owner around different areas of their business. And so ultimately, I'm really intrigued by Internet of Things opportunities where, again, the hardware is purely unlocking some more information buried around us that enables us to then build uh, really valuable software businesses. That's where we have to be just really careful about how we implement these things. And, you know, we want to implement, you know, the right amount of data to be able to take action and, and do the right things um, for the customer, but not too much where we cross any kind of line. Now, you know, we're self-limited when it comes to Internet of Things because if you're outfitting, you know, 100,000 square feet of floor space with sensors, guaranteed you're actually being really selective about what data you're, you're actually bringing back. And so... Um, you know, again, it's just about being very targeted and focused on, again, the specific application. So you're not just collecting all types of data for data's sake. But in Enlighted situation, you know, frankly, the big insight really is occupancy and understanding how people are using buildings. Um, but occupancy is harder to understand than, than you'd think. And right now, you know, you've got these very basic occupancy sensors that everyone's familiar with in their office where, you know, after 10 minutes of not moving, the, you know, the lights go off and you're like, I, I'm still here. And, you know, <laughs> and so the problem with those sensors is they're, they, they're um, you know, pretty low resolution. And so the key is how do you find sensors that really understand, you know, there's, there's a human who's sitting in the office who's sitting very still. And so, you know, getting a lot of better granularity around sensing is really important. And that's part of, you know, again, the technology embedded in the Internet of Things. But once you have really good high resolution data around occupancy, you know, you can really dramatically change, um, you know, the, how the building operates. And, you know, one of the things we talk about with this Enlighted company is, you know, we're helping redefine the future of the at-work environment. So when you come into your office, it knows you're there. It's adjusted for you. The light's set to your level. The temperature's set to your temperature. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things that can be accommodated to ultimately make it a better work experience for the person who's in that office. But then for the company themselves, you know, what we've shown so far that when we install these sensors and the lights, you know, we save 50 to 70 percent of all lighting energy. Dramatic, dramatic energy reduction simply by just shaving off, you know, lighting usage when people aren't actually using rooms and, and just very simple things like that. We can also do, you know, a similar, not quite as much savings, but similar things around energy as well. So the environmental implications of, of this kind of Internet of Things deployment is massive. Um, and doesn't put the customer out in any way. So I love the fact that as a customer, you're not sacrificing, um, you know, for, uh, you know, the lights to sort of control and turn off when you're not in a room. And so it's just the building being much, much smarter about how it's being used. Mm -hmm.